you're at the same shot, right? We ask that you remain standing and honor the playing of the national anthem. Good evening, lacrosse fans. Welcome back to Percy Perry Stadium, day nine. And the final day game of day nine, I should say, as it's Jake Elliott and Andy Watson with you here for the final game, Andy, of day nine. It'll feature Ireland going up against Germany here for seventh and eighth place. Yeah, two teams that, uh, you know, disappointing games for them yesterday um, and you know, Ireland wanted to do better against Israel, fell victim to a, a really good upstart Israel program, and a German team that just ran into the juggernaut that was England. And so, you know, you look at you look at this for Germany, this is probably the game that they wanted to be in. 
Um, you know, maybe they would have liked to be in that 5-6 game, but uh, realistically, with the competition that's been here, this is this is a good result for Germany. And for Ireland making their debut, this is their benchmark for the U19 program. And of course, they will host in July of 2020 at the University of Limerick. So a good opportunity for them to continue to build, develop their program. And I think we're going to be in for a very competitive lacrosse game today. Two teams that play with an edge, but that have offensive flair. Uh, an Irish team full of North American talent and a German team that continues to grow and develop throughout this tournament. Uh, I think we will see two players in particular factor in. Uh, Soren Spiegel for Team Germany has had an outstanding tournament wearing number 16 for Germany. And on Ireland, pa Patrick Magliocino wearing number 29 is a player to watch. And some earlier scores coming in here from today. Mexico gets their very first win on their final day of competition in that rematch against Taiwan. So Taiwan finishes in 14th place, Mexico in 13th with a 9-4 victory in that one. And earlier games as well, Hong Kong topping Korea. So Korea finishes 11th Hong Kong, no, excuse me, Korea finishes 12th, Hong Kong 11th. And the previous game in this one, China looking impressive over Scotland, 15 to nine in that one, Andy Watson. So this one for seventh and eighth as Scotland finishes ninth, or excuse me, S Scotland finishes 10th, China finishes in the ninth spot. And China dominant in their win over Scotland. Uh, Eric Wang on the faceoff X was just unreal, and China just just jumped all over them early on. And uh, really good game. I and I mean it, three first-time teams in this tournament winning placing games today in Mexico, Hong Kong, and China. If you're keeping stats at home, Ireland a first timer here. If that trend continues, they would be the fourth to do it here on placing day Friday leading up to a big day tomorrow, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, throughout the broadcast, yes, Jake. Yes, indeed we will, as Fallenbacher will start for Germany. And it'll be John McKeague in goal for Ireland, who will wear their whites, Germany in black. Germany going from left to right across your monitor here on World Lax TV. If you want to be interactive during the webcast, you can send me a tweet at PXP, the number four sports. PXP for sports is where you can find me. Let's play some lacrosse. We're underway here, and Germany will have first possession with Lucas Kins. You want to get the officials out of the way early, Andy? Sure. Head ref is Steve O'Shaughnessy from New Brunswick. Genta Negasuji, the one of the referees, Mark Buckley. Dan Dugozima is the CBO. And Anti Pesca Molka, sorry, Anti Pekka Molsa, the bench manager. O'Shaughnessy, maybe a little lineage there for the head official. I want to create a controversy <laughs> early here, Andy. There's an early shot from Germany over top of the goal. Guy getting the ball right now for the Germans. Jeremiah Vanderkeen Juice has had an outstanding tournament. Uh, excellent on the dodge, and he's really good at finding seams through the middle. So Ireland losing to Israel, Germany losing to England. As those two will play for fifth and sixth tomorrow morning. And is this the Last game here on day nine, three more to come on day 10, the final day of competition. Some boisterous crowds today, you know, um, despite not being a packed house today, I think the, the fans may be getting what day rest before what's gonna be a busy day tomorrow. Uh, it'll be jammed in here tomorrow, no question, but Irish and German fans alike here to cheer on their teams for this seven, eight game. Awesome atmosphere. This is Tom Lyons, who wears 37. And is this just my second look at both teams? Early Port Medi bounce pass, Andy, handled by Ireland. And in they come, right in on goal, and a bounce shot over top. Out of the stick of Connor Austin, who was impressive in the outing that I did get a chance to watch Ireland play. Yeah, he's had an outstanding tournament. One of the leaders of this Irish offense. Here comes an outside shot, and our first goal of the game. Tom Lyons with a sidearm bouncer getting the friendly Coquitlam Town Center Stadium Turf bounce. And just some really good setup here. Uh, Magliocino from behind the cage draws the long pull uh, and coming cutting through the middle uh, and just open. He just pauses. Lyons there. Too much room for him and a nice 
That is a beautiful bouncer. Great bounce shot there. So Ireland goes up early, one nothing lead here. Well, let's watch the face-off X here. And it's always an important matchup during a game. Finn Post taking it for Germany. They'll win it forward, but Ireland there to scoop it up with the long pole. Yeah, if there's one area where I think Ireland may have the edge, it's on their long pole play. Some really good long poles throughout this tournament. Uh, both offenses, I think, are a wash. They're both very talented, and both teams have good goaltending. Another chance here for Ireland, maybe. And that ball will just die at the side of the goal. Do you think this Tendi might get uh, on your all-name team there, Jake? Ball and Bonker, got to be right up there. we got to get that straightened away for tomorrow, Andy. Yeah, we might have to make a list. Probably uh, one goalie, three poles, three middies, and three attack, or are we going to go one, one at each position? Maybe we'll throw a face-off guy in there as well. Yeah. I got to admit, I heard this chant in my sleep last night. I think I've been here for every German game except one. Well, you've been here. What what like, what are you averaging for hours a day here? Well, my sleep pattern's about six hours a night, maybe five. Five hours of sleep a night through this tournament. Um, eating at Boston Pizza a lot. The only kitchen open in uh, Surrey Guildford area after 11:30 p.m. And you're doing all the press releases, stats. Loving it, though. And working the broadcast, too, as you called in earlier. Was that your first game that you called, or have you been doing more? That was the first one I had a chance to tune into. Yeah, I did a, did a couple earlier today. Um, I did not do play-by-play -play on the first game, though. Wow, physical cross-check there against Germany. They're going to call a possession, but that could have easily been a cross-check. Um, but no, had the Hong Kong game earlier and then the China game, and they were both fun to call. Got to give a shout-out to my main man, Randy Clough, at Team Extreme Threads who has done up the kit here, if you will, for Team Ireland for these U19 games. Yeah, and uh, Randy's son's birthday today, it Connor. It is, Connor, yes, indeed. Happy birthday, the big 2-1, my friend. Legal everywhere on the planet now. And Ireland always have a little special feeling as they look very similar to my field club lacrosse team, the Coquitlam Beer Hunters, Andy Watson. Probably the best name in men's <laughs> college lacrosse in Canada. I will, I will argue that. Followed we're closely by the Ottawa Black Sheep. Yes, we're going. Uh, well, I'm trying to lobby for us to get away from Coquitlam Beer Hunters and just go with the notorious Beer Hunters. Yeah, yeah. Just keep Beer Hunters. I think that's all that really matters. Ooh. So for anyone who wants to check out that, our uniforms are kind of a uh, army camouflage with bright fluorescent orange numbers and. Uh, Kind of a, like a sniper scope looking down at a pint of beer. <laughs> and uh, Love it. lacrosse stick with a shotgun handle on the end of it. Easy call here for the officials. 18 and white. That's Rowan Gideon. Little hook. If they could call hook and field lacrosse, that would have been a textbook hook. But the whole 30-second technical, and we'll see Vanderken Juice start the play for Germany here. And it's threatening rain here. Maybe a little bit of a sprinkle out on the field here for these two teams. Let's get it out of the way tonight. Yeah, you know, I want to check the forecast for tomorrow, but it hasn't been particularly accurate through the week as it <laughs> is, but looking promising for tomorrow. Sunny, sunny with cloudy periods. So we should be in for a good day. As we'll play three games, 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Five and six will be England and Israel, and then the bronze medal game, Iroquois Nationals, who lost to Canada last night, 14-11 in a fantastic game. And we'll take on Team Australia, who lost to Team USA in a not-so-fantastic game, Andy Watson, 23-1. to one. Yeah, just a good, almost like a practice, controlled scrimmage for the U.S. That's the way it looked. They're just so dominant. They've had, that may have been their best game yesterday, the U.S. Well, you look at their goals against allowed through their round robin and semifinal. And a chance coming in, there's Germany. They tie it up and a late hit coming in afterwards yep. and a nasty one at that. That could, was nasty. Could be a two minute job here. As Vanderjuice, Vanderkin Juice on the goal. But uh, you look at USA Andy and they start off with Canada. They did not play well, but they hold them to five goals. You got to give them credit for that. Then they take on Australia. They win that one 12 to four. Then they play Iroquois, and I think, what, 17-3. 
So five, four, three, and that one is Vanek and Juice going to take a seat behind the German bench here. It's concealed by the flag. They don't yes. want us to see what's going on it's here. It's a good-looking flag, is it not, though? It's a beauty. And then England actually managing to get six, if I do yeah. recall, against the USA. Correct. Yeah. So that's the highest total they've allowed, and then only one against Australia in the semifinal. That was your boy Joe, Joe Cara that helped pace the English offense nice. against the Yanks. And actually took out Borges with a shot to the head for the rest of the tournament in that game as well. Although the official word from the United States is no comment when asking about the uh, status of Borges. Oh. Yeah, there's a second goal, and it's Lucas Kins. Making it look easy. 2-1 Germany. Excellent dish from Finn Post. And almost like a box lacrosse play there, uh, like a motion offense. And it was Germany making the Irish pay for that penalty. Good, just disciplined, patient ball movement. Alters, dishes the ball uh, to Post. And then right on the doorstep there is Kins. Easy goal there for the Germans, making it look simple. So not exactly prime time back in Europe right now, Andy. Three, 20 to four in the morning in Dublin, 20 to five a.m. in Berlin right now. So if you're up and you're watching World Lax TV here from the U19s, we appreciate you hanging in there with us. The Pilsner against the Guinness. Yes, well done. Hopefully you're having a few of those as you're watching at home. You might as well be if you're up at that hour. Special shout out to Sean Gibson. Gibby, I hope you're enjoying this and watching. Give Sean. Jake a shout out. Sean Gibson? Yeah. Not familiar? You want to elaborate? Yeah, Irish lacrosse here. guy. Buddy, buddy from uh, Canada who went to uh, Ireland and I met him at the Hrabeski tournament in okay. uh, Prague. And he's that's a guy that's growing the game in Ireland right now. It's on the bucket list for sure. There's no other action going around town center now. Everything wrapped up. This will be the final game of the night here tonight. Three more tomorrow, and then we're done. It's going to be a lacrosse withdrawal next week. I'm yes. going to need to go out to some games. Good inside roll and a tuck home. Madigan. Rory Madigan out of Chatham, New Jersey uh, from the Del Barton School. Just a nice little roll dodge. Can only assume his school colors are yellow, Andy Watson, with those shoes down there. Pretty bright, but excellent stutter step and pause and made top over and look silly. Tying the game up at two. You know, the only thing I'm not looking forward to tomorrow, Jake, is Israel will be short manned. Um, Saturday being a religious holiday. Right. Um, starting at sundown on Friday and then throughout the day Saturday. So they'll be without their full roster tomorrow. Well, I, I think told only they, I, I was told by a particular fan in Israel that they would play on the Sabbath. They will play, but there's some that won't. I guess the Orthodox Jews, from what was explained to me, um, some of them just won't. They won't even yeah. drive on the Saturday. So oh. I think there'll be a roster of 15 tomorrow. Okay. Well, you, I'm sure, know a little bit more about the situation than I do. But I'm happy they're playing. Um, it means something to yeah. make, for that program to make it to the fifth place game. It's a testament to the work that they've done to, to get there. Absolutely. Good one going here to s start the first quarter. Eight and a half minutes to go in, and we got a 2-2 score here between Ireland and Germany. Feed up the middle. That one's knocked down. And that one's stripped away right back to Ireland. Well, excellent pursuit on the ride there from the Germans, making the long pole move into a tight space, and then a double team, and the swarm just came in. So excellent work by Ireland. Lions coming up with that ground ball. And Ireland trying to take the lead. Flank comes in. And they'll go man up here. 30 seconds. Looking like a holding penalty. I believe on Austin Easterly. From Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. You gotta say, the white's much easier to pick up numbers than the greens <laughs> were yesterday in the bright sunshine. I was doing stats for that game that you were calling and it was impossible to try and even see half the numbers. 
anything from basically 10 through 19. Yes, any double digits. Pressured out wide here. And just roll it into the corner. Find the trailer, Austin. Wasn't cheap, however. And this one will just get out of play here. We're going to go back to Germany. Still a good effort from Jason Reed to try and track that one down. Good ride coming here by the looks of it from Ireland. They're going to pressure Germany and try and force them into play. Nice little stick fake there from Fallenbacher. Look out now. Got to move this ball here. In some trouble. Doesn't seem to be panicking all that much, however. No, good stick from Fallenbacher. <coughs> Excuse me. As they get across center here with Beckman. Open man. And a shot. Back of the goal. Spiegel once again, I believe. Yeah, an excellent look and great drive there down the field. And the long pole making the Irish pay for that full court ride or full field ride. And just Beckman switching hands there with the pole, creating space and with an excellent angle. Spiegel just with a sidearm blast. Not much McKeague could do about that one. Interesting the contrast and length of the goalie sticks between McKeague and Fallenbacher. Yes, very much so. Don't forget, fans, if you're up late in either Germany or Ireland, you want to get at me during the webcast here. All questions and comments, concerns are welcome. You can find me via Twitter at twitter.com slash pxp, the number four sports. Ireland up with a face-off. But what are they going to call procedure? It's going to yes. be Ireland ball anyway. Yep. Drive goal line extended as Madigan will take it all the way around the far side of the field. Oh. Feed to the crease, and it was the right idea. Just couldn't quite connect on that pass, and Germany will get possession back. Connor Austin wide open on the top of the cage and couldn't find him for that pass. Tough long pass upfield and turned right back over here to Ireland. Germany leads three to two. Fallenbacher looks a bit thug-like with those, you know. Yeah, he's got a little street look to him. Yeah, I kind of like it. There's a bit of an edge. He could start, oh, we got a German player down, rolling around in pain. And they will blow the play down here to attend to him. I didn't quite see what happened there, Jake. It looks like maybe he rolled an ankle. There is a flag down on the field. And it does look to be ankle-ish. As it's been a long nine days of competition for these teams, and I believe what this is their seventh contest for both teams, and it'll yeah. be their final one. Plus some exhibition in the day or two leading up to it. So for this German team, it has been a long week and a half. Yeah, seven games in nine days will take its toll, and I really kind of felt like that was the difference in that Canada Iroquois game last night. Nine six Iroquois leading that game in the third quarter. Canada finishes off with a 7-1 run going away. And you had to think fatigue came into play in that one. Without question, and I mean, you could see it. You could see it midway through the second quarter. There was a part in that game where the Iroquois had to find an extra gear, and they did. But then by the third quarter came around, I think they went up 9-6, and then Canada just went on that run and never looked back. So it will be a rematch of 2012 and 2008. I think even 2004, if I'm not mistaken, yes. Canada and U.S. will duel again for the gold medal. And you know, this year, the one thing that may be in Canada's favor, and people can argue on this all they want, but the United States really haven't, aside from that opening night haven't win over tested. Canada, they haven't been tested, and they were only really tested for half that game against the Canadians, and maybe for the first 10 minutes against the Iroquois. And we've seen the Canadians make a lot of changes since that opening game. Yeah. You know, like Follows and Cook have become a lot more prominent. We saw Jeff Teat all over the field last night, working from behind the wing, even on the far wing on his offside. And I think they've kind of figured out their matchups that they want on long pole as well. 
who they feel comfortable checking their other team's best players. And uh, let's not forget, Bear only started half that game for Canada in that opener as well, and he'll for surely be between the pipes for the Canadians tomorrow. Oh. Shot right off the crossbar and out of play, and they'll give it to Ireland, I believe. Yes, yep. indeed. Player closest to the line where the ball goes out. Heads up play there, no extra balls along the sideline, and Bone Boy's kind of sleeping at the wheel here in both hands. Well, an Irish fan quickly up to grab the ball. Been a long week for the Ball Boys as well. Yep. This one, <laughs> one Ball Boy shrugging his shoulders. He's getting chirped by maybe a younger brother at the other end of the field. Game within the game, Jake. Indeed. So who do we have? Oh, nice dodge there. And just left the stick out. And Fallenbacher will outlet quickly. It's a long one. Picked up by the Germans. Two on two here, and they'll pull up. So I think we got a Team Canada player coming up on uh, Stealth Radio tonight on TSN, if we I'm not do, mistaken. Yes. Stealth Classified at 11 p.m. on TSN 1410, or you can check it out on the TSN Go app as well. As we will talk all things U19, there's a shot and a goal on the run. Spiegel again with a second. I believe that might be three for Spiegel. You might be right, my friend. We'll have to double check that. And actually, Vanderken juice with one for Germany, but that is their fourth goal, so we'll check it. But yes, uh, 11 o'clock, TSN 1410, still classified. We'll talk U19s. We'll have Trey LeClaire from Team Canada on. And uh, who else we got coming up? Jeremy Bosher from the New Westminster Junior Stambles Player of the Week. Good stop from Fallenbacher. Let's check the stats in. You got two goals for Spiegel now. Okay. And a two-goal lead here for the Germans and in possession. Germany, this has been the best I've seen them throughout this tournament. And again, they're another team that's peaked throughout. They are now finding their rhythm together. Well, playing against... A team like England in the previous matchup. Coming into this one, you're going to have a lot more yeah. confidence playing against better competition as they did against England. There's oh, another nice goal. Nice bouncer. Shot on the run. And that was Sontowski on the finish, and it's 5 to Germany. Well, McKeeg trying to figure out why his D isn't sliding on that. Sontowski just getting an open lane, and Lions. Did well to defend, and I actually McKeague's just mad at himself on that. He feels he should have had that. He did have an open look. Tough one there. This turf has actually had some strange bounces today, and that might have been another one. Almost changed direction on him there. German's going to the bounce shot a lot here in this first quarter. Can't blame him. It seems to be working for him. Sure does. And goalies will always tell you that's usually the toughest shot to stomp. Flag will fly here once again. I believe it's going against Germany. Yes, it should be a push on the back. I believe going against number seven, Lucas Kins. No, maybe not. No, going against 23, I believe. Jonas Locke. Mm -hmm. Long stick midi on the uh, draw line. So man up for Ireland here, down three. Just over a minute and 20 to go here as good slap check there. Knocked that ball free. <laughs> and then Germany anticipating the rotation well. And, man, I don't like that flag. Looked like a well-timed hit to me. But two men down now for the Germans. Well, make them pay going through the middle, right, Jake? You do that early in the game, well, it may pay off for you. Germany just looked like they had their rotation down a little quicker than... The Irish offense. Although I will say maybe that penalty was warranted because Madigan had his stick knocked out of his hand about two seconds before that behind the net. Well, let's see what they can do with a two-man advantage here. Drive from around the cage, swing it back, step into one, scores. Connor Austin with another for Ireland and also took a late check there, but I don't think the referees are willing to throw in another. They might not have any left in their pockets. <laughs> So you see another flag bearer running around there, enjoying the crowd. Good shot there from our camera crew. But yes, Madigan getting the goalie moving. Just simple rotation on that ball. Connor Austin, right-hand shot on his weak angle. Still makes it count. 
Ireland up now 4-3. Sorry, Trails 4-3. I could have swore it was 5-3, yes. but uh, they may not have updated the scoreboard here, but we'll... You're right, Jake. See if they do. Oh, and uh, we return 20 minutes in the books and 60 to go here from day nine. Seventh and eighth place on the line and a good one going between Ireland and Germany. 5-3, Germany leads Ireland when we return to World Blacks TV. Welcome back, lacrosse fans. <laughs> a little fun in the crowd in the intermission. Bring it on, lacrosse edition. Indeed. Oh, we got spirit chant going. What are those outfits called? Oh, man, we, never, we, we, we never, we never did, did get the answer no, on that. We didn't. Uh, we, it's what Google's for, Andy Watson. You got some time if you want to do a little research. I just know it's not Lederhosen. Four? Okay, four three, so my it friend. is four three. All right, my apologies. It is four three Germany. Good even matchup here with Team Ireland. Here come the Germans in black. Yeah, tough pass to handle. Will be kept in play. Looks like the Irish have gone into a zone here in the second quarter, like just like a two 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 zone, and they're putting the guy off the bottom that marked the guy at X. Yeah, almost a two three one. Yeah, Strict. I haven't seen that from the Irish yet this tournament. Almost giving up the outside shot. Nice ground ball there from the long pole for Ireland. Luke Murphy. A little windy down there, still rain just holding off. And as we'll look for good weather tomorrow for the three final games here of the 2016 U19 games. Ireland, chance to tie here. Magliocino gets the double. And he gets the shot off, got deflected. Coming around left hand. That one will bounce wide. And it's Madigan with a good drive. Good communication here from the German defense. Sorting out their assignments. They look quite organized right now. And as we play six on six here. Connor Austin got a step on his man and scores. Hat-trick goal. And we got a tie game. Well, they're not making it easy for Austin along the little tightrope there going along the goal line extended. But, man, he paid the price for that goal at the end. But excellent one-on-one -on -one there going up against Anton Gnutzman. Gnutzman just not quick enough to stay with Austin. And even though Topoven did the slide there, and made uh, Austin pay pay the price for that goal, which is not quickly enough. Ireland tying this game now at four. We got a good one here, Jake. And our 
good buddy Dave Hollows, UK Lax fan, back on. I think he's watched every single game of this tournament, Andy Watson. Hashtag dedication. Oh, my goodness. But it's good lacrosse. Like, I've been very impressed. With the exception of the blowout games, we've had some really good tight games over the last week. A privilege to be part of. Absolutely. Biggest turnout for the U19 games ever with 14 teams, sir. Ireland looking to take the lead. Got some room for a shot, and they got one through the five hole. Number 18, Ron Gideon, puts Ireland in front five to four. Well, that big stature of Gideon and doing the work down low was mad again. Drew the near double, gets the ball to X. So I think for women, Andy Watson, it's called a Durndle. Is that how you pronounce it? You even gave me how to pronounce it to a problem. Durndle, nice. The delightful traditional Dirndl. female German outfits, if you will. So do we call them the Dirtle Dames? <laughs> you can. I will refrain. I'm going to get voted off the broadcast, I think. Oh, nice check there. That would be them. Oh, nice late chop there. Game getting physical, Jake. Well, the Irish always love that, and Germans will never shy away from that either. And I think we'll have to watch that battle of long poles. Tophoven for Germany, and 20 for the Irish. That's uh, Geroid Dunbar. Good feed through the middle from Fallenbacher. Gets it to Kins. Germany will look to tie. Right-handed drive. Here comes the double, and what do we got? A ward, I think. I, yeah. Given what they've allowed with the ward thus far, that lacking the consistency there is Per Anders Alters. I think I've up. seen one warding call all tournament. Good poke there. Oof. We'll goes skyward. Brought down by the Irish. Jason Reed just took a cross check to the head undetected there. Ireland will make some changes. As we approach the six minute mark, here's Connor Austin again. Austin open, but tough pass to get through from there. Here's a feed in front. Good stop from Fallenbacher. Came out to challenge and took time and space away. Yeah, goaltender for Germany having another outstanding contest. And Germans just almost go offside. And just save it right on the line. As we have six and a half minutes gone here, second quarter. Ireland up one. Seventh place on the line. I would expect all the teams not in competition tomorrow to be on hand for the final three games. Did you have a chance to stay and watch the skills competition, Andy? You know, I saw most of it. The long shot with the long poles, that was pretty cool. Uh, good for the players to have some fun too because too often they don't get the opportunity to, to goof around a little bit. Now, fans from Ireland and those maybe watching here may be wondering what the Remember Ken banner is up yeah, on the Yeah, I was German. actually just looking at that myself. So not that long ago, Ken Galluccio passed away. He was one of the driving forces behind the growth of the sport of lacrosse in Germany, a referee, a uh, guy that built the youth programs. He was a fo photographer, manager of the U19 team of the past. He was in London in 2006 with the senior men's team. 
He'd be very proud Ouch. of this German effort. And wow, that was a howitzer. Couple of shot blocks there, one from the goaltender, one from the defender. And Ireland holds here as they'll try and kill some time off their penalty now. Anyway, anyone who would have met Ken, maybe at the Berlin Open or at various World Championships, just uh, he was a wonderful man, and it's nice. It's a nice um, token, yeah, a nice gesture from the German team. And Ken was such a big supporter, and I'm sure he's watching down on them right now. He'd be very proud of their effort and proud of the continual growth of the sport in Germany. So hats off to you, Ken. You're missed. Well said, as Ireland has killed off their penalty. And back to six on six as they'll look to clear the ball now. Fairly aggressive ride here from the Germans. They find the open man, but they are offside. No, they're not. Man just in front of the benches over there. Tough pass, good catch from Dunbar. As they'll bring it towards the near sideline here. And his lights starting to take over on Percy Perry Field. Always nice for these teams to play on the main stadium as well, Andy. They don't get a chance to do it most of the tournament. I think both these teams have had one game over here, maybe more if you want to correct me on that. Yeah, Germans have had, I think, three here. The Irish won. Um, so a bit of a little bonus for these guys. Yeah, for sure. Especially in a game like this, you know, you want your finale to be. Uh, you always want to win your last game. Yeah. I mean, top eight finish for either of these teams, no matter what happens. They've, they've got to be proud of the tournament they've had and the growth that they've all both shown throughout this tournament. We get another wording call. Another word. Well, at least we're starting. The consistency yes. is there. That, that's the good thing. At least players aren't guessing now. That's all you want out of the officials is consistency. Halfway through quarter two. We will play four. And overtime if necessary. Yeah, we haven't seen more than one OT game in this tournament. This is one on paper that I think we could very well see that, Jake. Well, the one that we did see made up for all the lack of <laughs> the rest of them as it went. Well, you play two non-sudden death periods, four minutes each, and yeah. then it goes to sudden death, and we played five of those. That is correct. Crazy game. Taiwan topping Mexico. Mexico gets their revenge here today. Good ball movement, but an excellent strip there. Uh, sorry, uh, an interception there from Irish defenseman. I believe that was Luke Murphy in the 3-1. Uh, 21, maybe, Adam Norgar. Yeah, good correction there, Jake. So we get a timeout. Yes, I believe Ireland wants timeout. We'll take a quick one as well. Ireland leads Germany by one, five to four. Don't forget, you can get at me via Twitter at PXP for sports. Nine minutes to go here, second quarter. We'll be back right after this.
Cards fans, little cross section back underway here with nine minutes to go, second quarter. Ireland in possession up one. Chance on goal, shot didn't come out of the pocket very cleanly. And we'll roll out of play, Ireland will keep it. Yes, the Rebels dynasty. Wow. Well, that Junior B Northman team is, we're just checking a Twitter feed on uh, some box lacrosse action here in Eastern Canada. Six Nations Rebels said, what, one, four in a row? Founders in a row, five, I believe. Four or five, anyway. And uh, that Orangeville Junior B Northman team has had a fantastic year. I believe their goals against average for the season was like four between their two goaltenders. Just incredible. Oh, junior B program strong in Northman country. Connor Austin, feed low. Trying to hit the counter coming down the lane. Pass was knocked away. And yes, I forgot Aquasasne won last year, beating Six Nations in Calgary. Okay. But the Rebels had won the four prior to that, and then late 2000s, they won in 07 and 08. So that's wow. a big win for the Northman program. Taking them out in four games in the best of five. And delayed call on here as Fallenbacher comes up with the loose ball. Lob over the top, it gets over everybody. And it will be picked up at center and turned back the other way by the Irish. for the positive matchup here. Got a man behind the goal in Madigan. Been a fairly well played lacrosse game here between both these teams as Lions finds an opening. And that looks to be the spot on Fallenbacher a little bit, Andy. We've seen a few go through the fine full now. Yeah, and I, I mean, just getting them moving, that seems to be the trick. Although Lions froze again on that one. And not a ton of, not a ton of uh, support there. There's nobody slid up to take him away. That's the second look that he's had. Well, I guess in that one he created the space, but no right. help. Like this short stick matchup there. And just shying away there from yeah. the shot. You no know, you flamingo. almost want to make, yeah, make the contact at least. So it was 29 and black. Florian Werner. You got the long stick, you might as well use it. Back to center we go. And Ireland with a faceoff win and ref thought about it and then decides to throw it. They flank down here on Germany. As here comes Madigan with a head of steam. Double team after him. And another flag, another flag coming yeah. here against the Germans. Well, as soon as that free arm drops off the stick, you cannot make contact, and that's an easy call for the official. So six on four here for the Irish. Yeah, it's a 6-4 lead for Ireland, and chance to pound to it here with a two-man advantage. I do like those German uniforms. Just plain black, white numbers. Come get us. A little flag on the sleeve there. Yeah. Simple, but effective. Yes, imposing. And those numbers are so easy to read. <laughs> You're fantastic. A broadcaster's dream, yes. my friends. Anyone thinking of making a uniform, don't do what <laughs> well, many teams do. Yeah, I mean, I'll take the Langley Thunder. I've box across team here oh. last year is another shot another goal it's Lions again black jerseys they put dark blue numbers on the back yeah I know I, and I, I'm okay because I know all the players but for anyone new broadcasting the game they would have just been lost like absolutely lost anyways German uniforms look good and these whites for Ireland not too shabby either yeah it's nice to see the teams partnering with uh the official Local apparel company, sponsor, yeah. yeah. And thanks to Randy and his team from Extreme for all oh, their support yes. through this tournament. They're great for the lacrosse community. They have been absolutely wonderful partnering with all sorts of different teams and leagues and levels, indoor, outdoor. Here they come again. Good check from behind to knock that one free. Procedure call for playing without a cross. Mm -hmm. And you got to blow that in quicker. He mm -hmm. has an opportunity and he's just waiting. 
Beckman, here he comes. Open man, turn and pass, and it was low. Good hustle there from... Vanderken Juice yeah. keeping that one in as he has returned to the game after a brief absence. Now a flag down here on Ireland, a second one coming in as well. A slash on the leg, maybe. Yeah, I think we've got simultaneous fouls, a slash and I think a push. A hold, and then a slash in retaliation, I believe. Yeah, a good call by uh, Steve O'Shaughnessy. Lewis will go for Ireland. And I believe it's number five for Germany, Connor Evers, who's an actual local product here out of the Maple Ridge Barards Intermediate Program. What's going on in inner A? I don't, oh, could have uh, been a hold. Playoffs underway, and pr what provincials are always on the August long weekend? I think so, yeah. So a couple of weeks from now, I think they play a preliminary round, and then they get the four top teams to the provincials. Should probably know. I won one of those way back when, Andy. <laughs> your, lac your, your lacrosse fog, though. We've we're, we're got you in field mode right now, Jake. Yes. Almost an interception there. I love the compete compete level on the loose balls today. It's been physical game and very entertaining to watch. We're going hard, and there's another good check from behind. It's Tompoven. There's Tompo, a little flip over the head. It scores. Well done, and a flag. <laughs> nice little pass from Tompoven. And then the finish. Pair Enders Otters, who's had a strong support contingent here all week long. Well, excellent ball I movement. Like those helmets for Germany as well. You can see Topoven getting cranked there at the end, and a nice finish there by Olters. A little dip and dunk. So I actually got a chance to message with Doug Jamison of the Iroquois Nationals a little bit uh, late last night after that game, and just you know said. What an effort from yourself and your team, and uh, should be proud of what you guys were able to accomplish and uh, go get that bronze medal sort of thing and back and forth. And him being a gentleman of larger stature like yours, Julian, I said, I'd love to get a piece of memorabilia off you in some regard. I uh, figured you'd be the guy to go to being kind of similar size. He says, come and see me after the game. I got some stuff for you. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, the Iroquois Nationals gear is just wicked stuff. Yeah, it's pretty unreal. And they've been such a good group of people to deal with. Ansley Jamison, the executive director of Iroquois Lacrosse, they've, you know, represented. First yeah, first class, and they've represented themselves very well. And we got a timeout, Andy. We'll take a quick one as well. You can come back and finish that thought when we return to more. Day nine here at the U19 World Field Lacrosse Championships on Sports Canada TV. Team Ireland Penny to number 21. Adam Norgard, one minute personal for Abel check. Time of the Penny 17.54. That's Norgard, one minute for pers personal for Abel check. Time 17.54. Lacrosse fans, welcome back to Percy Perry Stadium. Second quarter action, late stages here. About a minute and 50 to go. Germany down two on the man up. Your score is seven to five as you see it on your screen here on World Lax TV. Feet inside, didn't connect. Germany still with it, however. As they look to get a little closer, good pass across the crease. Tuck it home, yes indeed. Number 14 for Germany. Janka Buckerman makes it 7 6 Ireland. And they'll call timeout to preserve a little time on the man up as well. 
And do you want to finish that thought on the Iroquois or? Yeah, I mean, you know, the stigma I think on, on some First Nations teams in past years has been, you know, unfortunately negative. And if nothing else, this is such a great example of how wrong that is and of how awesome this team has been. They've just been a class act from start to finish. The players on the field, the players representing the executive, or the coaches representing the team, the executive representing the team, nothing but a class act. And please thank you, carrying themselves well on and off the field, competing 100%. Yep. They're exa it's exactly what you want. And yeah. that's, you know, that's well, a really good thing to see in this game. Yeah, Brad and I were talking on, on Stealth Classified tonight that'll air at 11 o'clock on TSN 1410. But seeing how, like, now for the Iroquois Nationals senior men's team is, like, they're right there with the Jamesons and yep. the Thompsons and, you know, Stotts. And now you can probably throw, in two years' time, Nanakoke and Austin Stotts on that team. They're going to... The gap is closed between USA, Canada, and the Iroquois all competing and, and having a chance to win a gold medal. And I really think they're coming into their kind of golden age for the Iroquois Nationals and what they're going to be able, be able to accomplish. Yeah, and I would expect in 2019 when the World Indoors come to Langley, mm -hmm. I would fully expect that we will see the very strong potential for the Iroquois to take that. Oh, I can't wait. I, I, like, I honestly remember thinking when this game got announced that Coquitlam was going to be hosting again in 2016. When was it? 2014, I think, when the announcement yeah. came. Here's a chance for Germany, I bet they'll have to reset. And I thought, well, man, it's going to just take forever to get here. And then all of a sudden it was here, and now all of a sudden it's almost over. It's it wonderful. so quick. Soren Spiegel with another there, Jake. Bounce nice bouncer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're tied, and nothing settled quite yet. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the seventh goal for Germany on the bounce. There might have been one sidearm that didn't bounce, but be just a beautiful setup. Spiegel with way too much real estate to take care of that shot. And any time you give a player that talent that much room, the slide should have come up there from the long pole McMahon and it was nothing doing. <laughs> no question. Well, you got to remember here, seven games in nine days for these teams. And not only does the physical physical nature of your game start to deteriorate but the mental will as well once Last the physical starts to happen that's when the brain starts to go chance in on goal ireland will answer right back huge goal at the end of the half there jake putting uh magliacino yeah irish will go up eight seven in the half that will in fact do it as 40 in the books and 40 to go seventh and eighth place on the line it's a one goal lead for Team Ireland over Team Germany with 40 minutes to play. We'll have it for you after a 10 minute break here from Percy Perry Field. We will return to the FIL U19 World Field Across Championships from Coquitlam, BC on World Lax TV, brought to you by Novus right after this. In the meantime, send me a tweet at PXP for Sports.
right, lacrosse fans set to go here for half number two. The final game of day nine, seventh place on the line. And it's a one goal lead for Team Ireland over Team Germany. Jake Elliott, Andy Watson with you as set to go at center. Blow the whistle, let's play some lacrosse. Pretty entertaining opening 40 minutes, Andy Watson. Yeah, for, and for sure, both teams' de defense is settled in. Um, the, the bounce shot seems to be the shot of the day. And both teams getting a few bouncers in there. Germany in particular exploiting that nice bounce off the turf. We do have a goal tending change here for Germany. Mikhail's is of Zenoviev, I believe, in that now for the Germans. We're in the 1-3. Okay. That's been fairly typical. They've been uh, splitting most of the games in half. They have. Thought they might have gone with a one guy today in the championship, well, yeah. ultimately their final game, the seventh place game. But I like that, split them up. That's not uncommon in field of grass, that's for sure. And you can see the teams at the pro level do it. University and college as well. But seventh on the line here. First time appearance for Ireland. And they're up a goal. And we talked about it earlier, but hosting again in 2020 at the University of Limerick, I think that's going to be a great event. You got to find a way to get me there. Hey, I'm I'm already working my way over there. I bet you are. Planting the seed. they will be in there as an official one way or the other, I'm sure. They're going to have, you know, with the growth of the game, I would expect it will be a bigger tournament than this one even. Maybe a chance here for Ireland. Open room. Here comes the shot. Lots of bodies in front as that one carries out of bounds. Fan sports been wonderful. Enjoying every minute of our 45 plus games. Yeah. I mean, literally, fans <laughs> have just been amazing all week long. Here's a good chance for Connor Austin and a stop from Zeno Diaz. Really pressuring here. With the stick hanging out, Cardinal Sin. Nice pull work there from mm -hmm. Lucas Topover. Flag coming here against Ireland. They'll let play continue as transition fast break. Here we go. Good one extra pass. And it goes. We're tied. Vander Kinjuice winds it up as we're tied at eight. Love it. Team's jacked right now. We haven't seen any dabbing, thank goodness, in these nine days of competition, Andy. <laughs> Not a fan. Uh, no, me neither. Kids these days. No, I don't mind, you know, a little celly, fist pump, high fives, just the dab. I, I don't know. But a bit of a unique celly here from Vanderkin Juice. Watch it now if we can get it. There you go. A little stir in the soup and the stick. Yeah. Bet you that guy eats pasta like a champ. <laughs> so. Tied at eight now. Four and a half minutes played in this third quarter. And Germany out with a possession off the draw. Are you doing stats and announcing at the same time right now, Andy? No, no. Okay. My buddy, uh, John Edwards who came out from Lennoxville. Oh. That's near Sherbrooke. I've been there actually, played a Canadian championship in what? Lennoxville, Bishops University. Was it snowing? It was cold, I can tell you that. It was over the Thanksgiving long weekend is when we play our Canadian nationals and uh, in the east coast of Canada, it was frigid. Great little town though, real lots of history there. Yep. Just outside of Sherbrooke, the francophone part of Quebec. But John has been here uh, along with Gina Jung for most of the tournament doing stats for us. John just a stalwart. He's putting some hours in, no doubt. Oh, ouch. Soaking that one. It was Dunbar, but he made the block. 
And big old scrum for it out near center here. And it'll be pulled away by Germany. Look out. <laughs> that one gets through. Here's a shot. Not quite as it wasn't sitting in the pocket cleanly. Uh, there was an opportunity there for an Irish player to absolutely steamroll a German. That was probably a good decision not to. He would have ended up in the sin bin. 8-8 eight, eight game. You don't want to take a penalty at this stage. Uh, everything on the line for these two teams here. Five minutes gone, third quarter. Connor Austin with a good move high. I'm impressed with this German pressure. It's been sustained throughout the game, and it's I think that could end up being an X factor later in this game at the fitness level here. This German team has been very good throughout the tournament. Yeah, well, I mean, that's something you need to prepare yourself in a tournament like this where you're going to play multiple games in multiple days in a row, and it's a grind. Oh, Ooh, good hit what there. Hit. And that's a clean one. No flag comes. And that's the right call. Yes, good non-call. Here comes Germany. Trying to attack on the fast break. And can't connect as that one sailed through two intended targets. An excellent hit down on the near post in this north end of Percy Perry. And you're right, Eddie, good no call on that. We have have seen that as you'll watch it here. That's just good contact. I mean, you could argue that he had the his gloves extended too far and maybe it was a bit of a push, but there was no full cross check motion. Mm. It was just push. Contact sport, lacrosse. Yep. Well, for the faint of heart. I'll never forget the first time my mother saw my pair of lacrosse gloves and looked inside and saw the warning label on the inside of the lacrosse gloves saying, playing the sport of lacrosse can cause severe or crippling injury or even death as a disclaimer on the inside of lacrosse gloves. Way to market the sport yes. as Ireland well, goes I, up by one. Yes. Sorry, we missed that one for my trip down memory lane. But yes, Ireland back in front and What's the numbers on Lions now, Andy? It's going to be three or four for number 37. Uh, that's four for Lions now. Four goals on seven shots. He's had a pair of ground balls as well. Good performance here for the, the sniper from Ireland. So almost half the goals here for Team Ireland from Tom Lyons. And ball pulled free here. Who's going to get this one? It'll be Team Ireland. They're going to step on the defender here. Switch hands. Can't shoot it. Still with it. And he comes, and the shot goes high, but no back up there. It'll go back to Germany. Because, man, has there been some physicality in yeah. this game. And I love the way the Germans are playing this defensively. Nobody's going to get an easy look. No one's going to have an easy shot. Make it, make them work for everything they have. And, yeah, it's a contact sport. I love, I love the compete level here for the Germans. Clear on now for Germany. Uh, we got a flag coming here against Ireland. Man, a number of flags in this game too. Yeah, and I mean not maybe not unexpected. We probably predicted this could be a physical affair. Vander can juice had it stripped, and here comes the flag back at center. And Germany trailing nine to eight will go man up and a chance to tie. Both teams have scored a pair on the extra man. So another flag coming out here. We will be back tomorrow morning, bright and early on the Watson, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Israel and England for fifth and sixth. And then at 1 o'clock Pacific time, it's Australia and Iroquois for third and fourth. 4 p.m. Pacific time for the gold medal, USA, Canada. All right here on World Lax TV, brought to you by Novus. And that Canada-USA game, if you're planning on coming down to Percy Perry Stadium, yeah, here early, it's going to be a zoo. And, and that's exactly what those teams deserve. In fact, all these teams deserve big crowds. But that game, it should be a beauty. A, you know, we've had a couple really good games, and I think that has all the makings of a great matchup. Yep. No question. And... USA, of course, have never lost the gold medal here at the U19 World Games. Seven time in a row champions. Looking to make it eight in a row against Canada tomorrow. And you know, just reading some of the media around the tournament, 
And as we see Vanderkin juice with a nice play there. Shoots maybe here, and in it goes. We're tied once again. Jacob Bolkerman, or Jakob? I think it's probably Jakob. Yeah, probably Jakob Bolkerman. Excellent goal there for the Germans. Again, they're getting a lot of looks inside. Good ball movement from behind the net from Vanderkin Juice. And Per Ol Olters just about lost the ball there. And probably for the best, though, as he let his teammate pick up the ball and fire it home. But what I was going to say, just the, you know, Coach Myers for the U.S. team, he said that this has been the most, I guess, you know, disciplined and collegial and stuck, like guys yeah. that are just willing to do whatever it takes for a team. And well, it's, it's workmanlike and yeah. almost robotic the way they've gone about their business. And they talked about it to some of the media as well, like how they they pick their team, not necessarily just based on talent, yep. but also based on who would mesh the best and who would be able to fill roles as they didn't want to see a Canadian team build a lead and then get a stall on and then do what happened in Denver in 2014 yeah. as we see more laundry and come out to here. To take it even a step further, you know, the three coaches for Team USA from Ohio State, Penn State, and Penn, the majority of this that USA roster made up from players from those three teams. Yep. And it's guys that they trust, guys that they know what they're going to get from them yep. when they're out on the field, and that that's important. And guys that will follow coaching. You know, sometimes your most talented players won't follow coaching. And so, you know, Taylor Ray and the Canadian boys, having a they'll have a challenge ahead of them tomorrow. Well, no shortage of brilliance for the Canadian coaches either. I mean, one of the best minds in college lacrosse and Matt Brown, one of the best face-off guys to ever play the game, and Jeff Snyder, and of course, Taylor Ray, who's got international experience as well. 9-9, nine, nine. Germany, man up. Trying to make it 10, can't do it there. Ireland up with the ground ball. And swim move. Nicely done on the clear there from Ireland. 9-9 nine, nine here, Jake. What a, what a good lacrosse game we got. Well, it's going to come right down to it. Nobody's been able to pull away a couple of two-goal leads here, but number of ties to go with it. Open man, a chance in. That's a goal. Ireland back in front, Madigan. Well, Madigan having a great tournament. And just a nice 1v1 matchup here, top oven doing everything he needed to do, but he just couldn't strip the ball. And an excellent wait there from Madigan, delays the shot, gets it by Zinoviev, and Ireland back up by one. 7.45 left here in quarter number three. Quick update for you, Andy Watson, your Victoria Shamrocks leading the Maple Ridge Barards eight to three. Well, I wouldn't say my Victoria no, Shamrocks, my friend. Hard, just give me a hard time over there. Gotta remain so. neutral and objective and it's Teddy Jenner back on the island to call that one. I think he's going to make his way back for tomorrow's action. Yes, we will see Teddy once again, the Tom Borelli Award winner. Uh, an award you've won uh, in the past, Mr. Elliott. 2012 recipient, says Ireland with two cool. quick words. Somebody checked the net on that. He probably ripped a hole through it with that velocity. What a nice rising shot from Jason Reed, the uh, State University of New York Oswego product. And excellent drive here. Stepped right into it. Austin with the yeah. dish, drew the double, and Reed, I mean, it doesn't get much easier than that. <laughs> Didn't leave anything behind on it, did he, for about seven feet from the top of the crease? <laughs> Jeez. Unbelievable. The offensive skill here. Wasn't going to leave the birdie putt short. No. <laughs> That's a tap-in. See some nice juggling on the sidelines by one of the German trainers. Look at everything here, Jake. Yeah, a little bit of everything, no doubt. And after Germany had tied it, two straight here from Ireland to take a two-goal lead. And we can't forget to mention local product Brian Gillis over on that Ireland sideline and had a chance to coach young Brian Gillis 
a couple of years ago. And a member of their senior national team. As we have an offside call on Ireland, ball will go back to the Germans. Actually showing 10-9 here, Andy, am I? No, I think it's 11-9, I do believe it is. We got the right score up on your screen. Germany trying to answer back here. There it is, put up on the scoreboard in the south end now. The cooperation is wonderful. Well, five and a half to go here in quarter three. Seventh and eighth place. Will be decided here in the next 25 plus minutes. Or maybe more, the way this one has gone. Well, push mm. on the back, allowing them that's, to play on. Man, man, that's... I, so we had a play on call from yeah. the back official and then there. he put his arm back down. Yeah, I don't... Maybe he didn't want to upstage his partner who was much closer. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was about. Tried to block it with his head. <laughs> I can't save it on the sideline. Oh. Not sure if we can get a replay of that or not. Niall Lewis is just going to get the gears for that one. Yeah, Alexandri Alexandria, Vermont product. That's what Virginia, sorry. That's what your stick is for, young man. Yeah. But hey, you can score with your head in lacrosse. That's true. That factoid, useless information, you can let fall out of your brain. <laughs> Crowd behind their Germans here, down two. Lots of nail biting going on though in the German half of the crowd. There's a chance, that shot goes wide. What's your biggest takeaway from this tournament? The biggest surprise for you, Jake? Biggest surprise, biggest surprise. Putting you on the spot, you yeah, have answer no, right well, now. But. I would have to say Israel has to be in that conversation. Yes. I would say Tohoku Nanakoke. I didn't realize how good yeah. he was. Um, I'm surprised the weather has cooperated <laughs> as much <laughs> as it has, believe it or not. Uh, the fire was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. The unusual and bizarre of the tournament, for yep. sure. But above all else, I just think the sportsmanship, the fans, and probably the relationships and friendships that have been made over the last nine days here, just the atmosphere alone all around all week long has been incredible. Yeah, and it's, you know, you look at sports like rugby and you look at the tight-knit community, uh, I'd say lacrosse is right up there in maybe, terms of the Maybe niche. stronger. Yeah, maybe stronger. And, I mean, the game isn't as big uh, maybe on the world stage as rugby, but I think you see this, You see a lot of similarities in the growth of the sport as we see an unnecessary roughness call there. Player out of bounds getting hit. Well, usually rugby players and lacrosse players get along pretty well. Something about drinking after the game regardless of the score, right? Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Battle for a loose ball here. Oof, oof. Ireland does well to come back up with it. Can they hang on to it here? Man, David Beckman getting in some nasty licks with well, a you stick. You can tell he's a little bit intimidating as well as the Irish players thinking about it. I almost announced him as, Be announced him as David Beckham the other day. Yeah, well, I don't think you want to do that to the Germans. <laughs> uh, that might uh, start a war. That Euro Cup still probably stinging. Sorry to bring it up. Got to admit, kind of lost sight of the Euro Euro with this getting. Yeah, well, you were a little preoccupied, no no doubt about it. The drive from Matt again. Double comes, gets the pass off. Just over two minutes to go, quarter three. And Ireland with a two-goal lead here. Matt again with two and two right now for the Irish. Open man. And feed high from the wing. No hurry here for Ireland. I mean, even the fan participation on Twitter and social media has been incredible. And yeah. you know, just everybody's just been so nice in their emails and their Twitter comments, except for our guy, William Johnny. But uh, we'll leave that one alone. Uh, he's just having some fun with you. But, I mean, everybody that's commented on these games have uh, had nothing but positive things to say and it's uh it's just been awesome i 
I knew when, when this tournament got announced, it was something I definitely wanted to be a part of, and I'm so happy that uh, I had the opportunity that I've had. Well, and I mean, for the fans at home, it's nice to have some lacrosse knowledge on a broadcast because sometimes you end up relying on volunteers who don't yeah, I mean, know what they're doing. And there's definitely a difference, I would say, between you know a professional announcer and a professional announcer who's a lacrosse guy. Yes. I, it, it, it'll, you know. It's a big not difference. To, not to honk my own horn here, Andy Watson, but it, it it does have a significant impact on the broadcast when you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> or at least I think I'd like to know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure which mic is up and which is down here, so. Now that we can actually still hear each other when you turn the mics off, Andy, I'm not sure which mic to turn up and which mic to turn down. <laughs> I was actually going to text you during the last game because I think you did that at one point. Yes, I did. You were yeah. yammering away and I uh, thought, oh, he's got the wrong mic turned up. Oh, what a goal. There's a nice one. Finn Post with a goal. Nice There's little bouncer there. That's his second of the game, if I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong on that. I know he's got an assist at least. As we approach 9 p.m. Pacific time here. Timeout on the field, I believe. Maybe there is. End of three quarters, in fact. So 60 down, 20 to go here. Seventh place will be decided when we return. More U19 games on Sports Canada TV. Brought to you by Novus. Here from Coquitlam right after this. Welcome back, lacrosse fans. Uh, our PA announcer, Mike Chernoff. Oh, look, we got our big winner here. <laughs> A massive pot for this peckish uh, crowd here this evening, Andy. 50-50 winner happy. She's going home with some money. That's good. Back to center field we go here at Percy Perry. Jake Elliott, Andy Watson with you. Blow the whistle. Let's play some lacrosse. We're underway here in the fourth quarter of action and flag coming in right off the get-go here and that's what probably like our 20th 25th flag of the contest here Andy well I've always thought that we should try and get a field lacrosse tournament sponsored by Tide especially when we have this much laundry to air <laughs> yes, well done, yes. I've been waiting to use that all week Jake I bet you have. save that one thought of that in my Shout sleep shout it night. out Andy big game tonight for Chris Wardle in the Shamrocks game one What's of your boys, isn't he? Vancouver Stealth mm, boy? Uh, no, he's actually a member of the Colorado Mammoth. Oh, that's right, um, yeah. Three and one, four point eight for him. So, Ireland with the man up. Chance coming, shot, and that one just missing from Austin, who covers his face with his gloves after that miss. Well, he's he's had a great game, two and two right now with a pair of loose balls and on top of that. We'll move this one quickly. This power play could be a difference maker here if they can get another one here, make a make the lead a little bit bigger. Lions, but he stumps. Zinoviev with the save. Here comes Germany shorthanded. They got numbers. Man, look at the speed. Right in. Scores. Beckman. 
<laughs> that was a selly. That was a selly. Might have been a little rehearsed, that one. Stir in the pot. Yes. Well, Big shorthanded goal here. Excellent loose ball by Beckman. Made no mistake, got nice and low, good technique, and just powers through that bouncer. And what are you supposed to do if you're Mr. McKeague? And uh, I don't, it's too bad we didn't get the Selly there on the replay, but the little stir of the pot there, yeah, Jake. Another one, I think that might be the German go-to. We play, when I played university ball at Carleton, we, uh, we spent more time practicing our goal sellies than I think we actually did practicing. So I'm gonna ask you the follow-up question. What was your record for that team? We were a drinking team with a lacrosse problem. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. The viewers at home can decipher yeah. for themselves. Chance for Ireland back to the way. Madigan and a flag. And that's kind of been the way this has gone, Andy. Every time Germany's either got close or tied it up, Ireland has had the answer. Well, Magliacino with a great drive from behind the net. And Madigan, catch, switch hand, bouncer, goal, takes the harm at the end. And a good flag. I think that's the right call. Steve O'Shaughnessy throwing the flag and getting the goal signal. And taking a little time to make the call now. What are they signaling? Just back to center, I believe. Yep, back to center. They're going to do a draw. Happen after. Man, the referees, too, have had a busy week. They were here a week before what's, most of the teams. Yeah, what's, like, 45 games. Yeah. How many officials total here? I believe 35. So how many games would each official average? Well, five games, or five officials in a game with the head referee, two assistant referees, chief bench official, and bench manager. So you figure 45, 47 times five, so you need to fill that many spots. So that's, I'm, I'm not doing the math I'm because I'm, I'm a bad math guy. I'm kind of interested to figure this out. So it's 235 games to cover with, game spots to cover with 35 officials. So most guys will probably get six or seven games in. 6.7 yeah, games, not bad anyway. Nice. I was. So right around about yeah, what the players play. Exactly. And they are running up and down the field just as much as these guys. And the injuries happened too. One of the referees went down with a knee, bad knee. So fitness testing though and a quiz and everything. They, and they have to go through all that. And then as far as you know, getting the assignments for the Ooh. gold medal and bronze games tomorrow, is that an evaluation that would continue over the course of the last yes. seven or eight days? And who makes that selection for the final grouping for uh, who gets that gold medal game to well, officiate. Referee in chief um, Dave Goulet from okay. Abbotsford yes. nearby. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Irish coaching staff not happy, wanted a penalty there. Uh, they'll confer along with assistant or deputy RIC Phil Pearson from the UK and all of the assessors and the RIC and the deputy RIC will work together to make those choices. Ongoing feedback throughout the week and then they'll make those determinations. We got a flag probably on Sportsmanlike. Looks like a couple coming in. Simultaneous here. fouls. So two guys doing doing the dirty behind the play. They both go sit in the sin bin, feel shame. The cubicle of shame. As yes, one player for each team. Man, those volunteer shirts look bright on the screen. <laughs> Not gonna lose them. Two hundred plus volunteers here, Jake, yeah. helping run this tournament. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Well, I mean, a tournament like this, really, it, it doesn't happen without volunteers no. like that. Yeah, it takes a village, right? But no, they, I mean, I think talking to some volunteers, this kid was <laughs> supposed to play for Spain. He'd done an exchange in Abbotsford with a family, bought his plane ticket, had planned to come out here. Spain, for a combination of factors, cost, exams, they couldn't bring a team here, so he's decided to come and... He already had the ticket booked, so he decided to volunteer the whole week here. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Some great stories. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, not a bad place to spend a couple of weeks. No. Really. No, exactly. The only thing, ooh, that's a, that's a nasty poke. Inside roll, low shot, <laughs> more flat. I mean. He just ran him over. 
Like every flag emptied out of every referee's pocket here. <laughs> yeah, 79 on a mission for Germany. Um, that's Hendrik Kosmeyer from Hanover, and he just torpedoed on top of the guy at the end of this play. I don't know if we'll pick it up, but Madigan driving and then just oh. well drove the knee. I guess it was less of a torpedo, but after right before that he'd had a poke on the guy that was dishing the ball and. Ireland goes back to the emo. Extra man opportunity here for the Irish. And they M O, a little hidden bone trick here from the Irish. He's got it. There's a pass, and whiffing on that shot was Austin. If you're going to sell the hidden ball trick, the guy that's selling it has to keep prattling. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not going to work. That's why I'll never really understand. Well, I mean, we've talked about white ball, white net, but why players would never just go with the white mesh, white head, makes it so much more difficult to pick up that yep. ball if you're a goaltender. Agreed. And wow. There's a good outside shot sent to the top of the goal. Tom Lyons again, I believe. On a mission here is Lyons. I think that's his third of the game. Oh, I think that might be number five, Andy Watson. Jake, I will check the old staties here. He's uh, taking a look here, he's got four uh, I think that's his fifth, actually. No, yeah, well, they haven't updated. Yes, they got 13-11 showing on the scoreboard in the stadium, and I believe it is 13-11 is your official score, Andy. Maybe 12 minutes left there, Mr. Elliott. Two L's, two T's. Yes. <laughs> I've learned that this week. Well, I think the FIL had to learn that the hard way this week as well. At PXP for sports. <laughs> Let's go with that. Call me Jumbo. Ooh, another bruising hit. Uh, Possession call. No, it's a it's good call. And it's it's coming down to now, Andy, just two tired lacrosse teams trying to get this thing out here. I think we're in for a good finish here, Jake. Austin trying to get a step on his man. Good stop there from Zeno Vieff. And this one will get out of bounds, and they'll keep it with Ireland, much to the chagrin of the German fence. A little bit quieter right now, Jake. Yes, well. Nerves. I know the big one comes up tomorrow, but this is as big as it gets for these two nations. One will finish seventh, the other will finish eighth with 11 minutes to go. And if you're Team Ireland, probably just give it to this guy and clear up. He's got the hot stick for the Irish. Looks like he's got some energy left in the tank as well. Oh. Up two. I still think you got to attack the cage here uh, rather than delay. Madigan on the face touch. Gets a shove. Still going. Madigan won't shoot it quite yet. And behind the goal. <laughs> just ducks away from a check. Feet in front. Scores. Nice goal by Magliocino. And paying the price for that was definitely Madigan. He's actually, sorry, yeah, Madigan behind the net there. Did all sorts of work. Just dodging a check in behind the goal to set up the pass. Watch it here now. Sneaks through two defenders, one there and one right there. And then I think he took a poke right at the end there. Oh, he did take one up high, yes. Grabbing his ribs. Stays out there, though. Well, nothing to save yourself for now. Last game of the year, can't hold anything back. Once in a lifetime opportunity for all these players. We only come around once to play this U19 championship. I think next goal is critical. Here comes Ireland right down the middle. And that shot goes wide. Nobody there for backup. Germany will get the ball back here. So it's a three goal Ireland lead. Look out, tough pass coming. Good catch there from Top Hoven, who's been sure-handed. Beckman again, part of that rush. Got to be a little urgency in the German game now, but a turnover on this possession. And is that one thrown out of bounds? Well, for header, head coach Pete DeSantis, this has got to be uh, Shorten up the bench time and go with your studs. The 
the athleticism and speed of this Irish team, though, they're pretty strong. Yeah, will this ball stay across center? It will. Ireland will pick it up in a little bit of trouble, however. Oh, Connor Austin just squeaking through two guys there. What a ridiculous move. Makes a great play to get it to an open man. On the cutback, and again, no backup for Ireland. And this is kind of what you'll see from teams that are new to the game of lacrosse to, to some regard, Andy, is these type of situations up three, fourth quarter, eight minutes to go. Yeah. Taking quick shots, not realizing that they don't have anyone behind the goal. Just simple little things that, you know, the Americans, the Canadians, the Iroquois are second nature to them, but it takes time for the Germans, the Irelands, to wrap their head around that sort of thing. Yeah, no, exactly. And even though a lot of these Irish players are U.S. based, it's still not the experience level that the Canada's and the United States and the Australians and the Iroquois have at this level. But I mean, t head coach Tom Pryor's done a fantastic job with this unit. And uh, Jim Holman, the business manager, one of the big brain trust pieces behind the uh, 2020 bid. They've got to be Ooh. very happy with the work they've done. Nice snag there. <laughs> That's a great catch. All right, number 22, Lewis. And now, you know, it's like up three here, Ireland can just take their time on the clear, wait for the stall to be put on, and I mean, even if they don't get any more goals here, can chew up as much time as they can, leave Germany with as little as possible. Oh, that was a good, solid hit, but unfortunately a little high coming through the train tracks there was a Pels, I think. No call, Germany ball, 6.45 to play. I mean, there was no malicious intent there other than to just finish the hit. I like the no flag. Look at Madigan in deep, he is just gassed right now. Germany need to score. Got a man cutting through the middle. Up to the point, outside shot, didn't get much on it. I think that was blocked in front by an Irish stick. From around the goal, feet in front. Ball picked up here by Ireland. And we do have a flag down on the far side of the field. This will go against the Irish. It'll be a German man up. For one minute, a little illegal body contact. And still time here, Annie, but almost getting into Muscore territory now for Germany. Well, crucial power play here, and if they can get one, they'll need to call a timeout right away to preserve that man up opportunity. We'll run some motion. Outside Spiegel, likes to shoot, does. Oh, the off post. the iron. And then it'll carry him to the far <laughs> sideline and out. Spiegel has a real good outside shot. Well, quick replay here, Kins feeds it to Spiegel and feet inside and that bounce shot just missing as Spiegel didn't get much on it. Here's that Spiegel replay though on a nice shot from outside just off the iron. Inside of the post at that. Feed to the crease, drive in front, shoot, score. Vanderkin juice. Does he want to stir it up again? Not this time, but as is Germans back within Two now at 14 to 12 with about three minutes to go. No, we got a little more time than that, don't we, Andy? Yeah, we got about 4.50 left. That's his third of the game. Okay, so yeah, that's what the three signals. Yeah, so give me the three. <laughs> My nonverbal communication skills need some work there, Jake. Should have done three with a scoring yes. motion. We'll work on it. The German crowd back into it here. Yes, it's been a great game here between Germany and Ireland. And what will be the final day, final game of day nine competition. And a game that will decide seventh and eighth. And you know, for this German team, they finished seventh in Finland. They would be happy, I think, with the growth of the game to finish seventh again this year. Yeah, so I mean, from teams that competed in 2012, Andy, do we have the standings from, can we pull those up somewhere? Yeah, definitely. Let me find them here for you, Jake. I know I've got see them. see who and moved I up, who moved down, who's new on the scene. Stewart! 
Mike, Mike Chernoff, our PA announcer, yeah, it's, it's getting, a, get, giving his... It's uh, okay, Mike. It's, it's 5 o'clock in Dublin right now. <laughs> Stuart, get after the bowl. That's a terrible Scottish accent. That might have been mistaken for an Irish one. Anyway, the final placings... Uh, is this it? I believe... Yes, I believe that is it. So... Scotland, where are they going to wind up? They finish... They finish 11th. A, they lost in that game earlier to the ninth place game. Yeah, so they will finish 10th, Jake. So they move up. Oh, nice drive here, but Spiegel's pass just slipping outside. Australia Alters. will definitely move up. Yeah, move Either from five to yeah. third or fourth. Yeah, and that was their goal coming into this tournament, talking to the brain trust of Australia lacrosse. They wanted to show improvement, growth. So we are without Korea, Netherlands, Wales, Finland, the Czechs here at this tournament. Correct. Also missing Team Japan from 08, Bermuda. A couple of teams that were here in 2008, not with us. But you look back to 98 when this was a four-team tournament. Yeah. Where we are now at 14. Wow, so that was a scramble here. Good pressure from German attack on that ride. Big possession won by the Germans. Can they hang on to it here? It's the long pole right in. And a stop from McKeague. Oh, and there's a flag there. That is just an undisciplined penalty. You can't afford that when you're trailing by two. That'll be a check in the crease, a 30-second technical. and uh, Might just seal Germany's fate here. They do not advance the ball, so flag will be called now with three and a half minutes to go. Time ticking. We will play stop time in the final three minutes. Yeah, Olter's there. Maybe a little frustrated not to get a better pass earlier in that shift. But Per Anders Olter's 30-second technical for checking in the crease. Giving his teammates a bit of an explanation, and I'm sure maybe an apology or two as well. Now let's see if Ireland can salt it away here with a goal. Poor midi bounce pass. <laughs> Handled well. Ooh. Now Austin tripped. Yeah. That will draw a flag. Austin still with it. Goes down again. And another flag. Oh. And that's got to be another. Yep. There goes the hat, hat, Andy Watson. Multiple flags on the far side as well. And the Germans have lost their proverbial marbles here late in this one. Well, for those of you at home that don't know, once you run out of flags, you go for the hat. Uh -huh. It's like go, go, gadget, no more flag. But we'll get a replay Better here. Better than tearing off the tarp, <laughs> I suppose. Depends on the referee, I guess, for some of the fans. But anyway, you can see the initial call here. The trip, and he caught the back of the head. And it's the late one that was kind of a nasty one here. Yeah. This one I'm not so sure about. Oh, I don't know if we're going to let it run far enough here. Yeah. Goes down again, and, you know, I think he's kind of falling down. It's this one right there. Thank oh. you. I mean, on the stick, okay, but why? Yeah. Just some frustration, but now, I mean, you put your team into a hole. Two-goal game here, playing for seventh place. And, yeah, maybe you don't need the three flags there, but you definitely needed that last one, that swing of the stick. Yes. So it's a six on four here, and... The two-goal lead, Andy Watson, if you're Ireland, I mean... You just eat it. Yeah, hang on to this one as long as you can. Wait for the stall call, then hang on even longer. Yeah. It's a five-on-four now. So that one player getting all the penalty time, so it's not multiple players, but multiple infractions. So he's got two and a half minutes, so they'll be short for the rest of this game. All right. Well, probably Almost. Probably cost him. Yeah. Now with guys like Madigan and Tom Lyons, Magliacino, and gonna, Austin. Yeah. Well, look out. Almost a turnover here. Good pressure from the German we'll defense. Push on the back. Play on. Germany trying to sell a call. And what is going to be the call, Andy? Oh, Looks like looking. Ireland heading towards the sideline here. Maybe a timeout down on the field. Yeah, I think you're right. 
All right, we'll take one as well. We'll be back with the big finish. Seventh, eighth place will be decided here in the next couple of minutes. This is U19 World Field Across on World Box TV presented by Novus. We're back after this. Just getting oh, fed a bit of information there, Andy. You can relay that to the fans if you like. Four minutes in penalty time to certain play. Uh, did, I, did I mishear that? Maybe. Oh, maybe I did. Oh. I will take my headset off and get clarification. I think just one player has four minutes in penalty time total. Oh, that's so probably. So I think if you, uh, if you garner five minutes in penalty time, add it up, you're gone from the game. Yeah, the expulsion rule, right? So top open playing with four and a half minutes. I think he's got a one more penalty and he's gonzo or maybe he has already been gonzoed i just used that as a verb gonzo jesus <laughs> day 10 tomorrow ladies and gentlemen we will decide fifth and sixth third and fourth and first and second israel and canada will get after it at 10 a.m pacific time for fifth and sixth. Australian Iroquois Nationals at 1 p.m. Pacific time for third and fourth. And then Canada will take on USA for the gold medal at four o'clock Pacific time, all right here on World Lax TV. Cannot wait, Andy. Yeah, it'll be a beauty day tomorrow. Let's hope so, and weather hopefully will cooperate. Here comes a chance from around the goal, and it goes. And another late slash from the Germans that doesn't get called. But that should just about do it here for Team Ireland now. Yeah, and they, you just hope from a game management standpoint that nothing stupid happens. Is I believe that was uh, Zenovia with the long pole. Strange. I don't really understand what happened there. Well, I think they were going after maybe the 10 man ride and got burned. Well, it was more or less a six on six with. A player in the, uh, the penalty box. It doesn't even look like the German goalie's wearing gloves. You know what? It doesn't. I don't think he is wearing gloves. That, well, that they are. They're just so small. That can't be true. I don't think he would be allowed to play. <laughs> but they are tiny. Here comes another chance. That shot goes high. And Ireland there for backup as we're into the final minute of play here. And Ireland. First time competitors at the U19 Worlds yep. are going to finish seventh here ahead of Germany, who will come eighth. And that's four first time entrants into this tournament that have won on Friday placing day. Yeah. Mexico with a big win over Taiwan. Yep. Hong Kong with the win over Korea and China with the win over the Scots. The game is growing. I wonder if that sets Israel up for... Uh, could happen. Good luck charm for tomorrow, although playing nah, with a shorter bench, that's, that's going to be tough against an English team. Well, we'll see if it's any of their real key players or not. We're not sure about that, but being the Sabbath, it's, you, you, I mean, it's not like you're going to say, what are you doing? You're not, don't yeah. do that. It's their religion. It's what they believe in. It's their culture. Exactly. And uh, you accept it and you move on. Well, timeout call here. I'm not sure about this timeout. It's not going to comment further, Jake. Yeah, three goal lead, 30 seconds to go.
Giving away a German ball cap down there. They're still hanging in here for that thing, Andy, or not? Uh, oh, yeah, we got a winner. Well, this one just about over here. About 30 seconds to go. Clock about to come onto the field. Ireland has it. Ooh. Open man in front. Do they want to shoot? Why not? Yes. Oh. Nasty hit at the end. You just don't need that. No, you don't. You don't. Well, he'll go to the box and feel some shame. Slap shot reference for those that don't get that. Right on, I saw that lady. Very nice. Thanks, bud. Good work. Well, I don't know if there's maybe some history or some animosity oh, between them. They just smoked them high. Yeah, that's vicious. That's just a dirty hit. Yeah. There's no need for that. Felix Munt on the penalty. I'll be surprised if that's not a three. That's just straight to the head, and there's no need for that in this sport. Not, not at any time. Never mind when the game is not in even doubt anymore. Let's see if we can cue up that replay again as we see the player, I think, getting up on his own. Yeah. It will be okay as he checks the chicklets. That's Rory Dunbar. Watch it one more time here. It took some courage to bring this pass in high in front of the goal. And turns and shoots, gets the goal, however, and that, uh, just, that's, that's just, a cross check to the neck. That's just not acceptable at this level of play. And, I mean, that's, you can, you could almost, that's an ejection. Yeah, no, exactly. That, I mean, there's only one thing that you're trying to do there, and it's m malice. A reckless and endangering play. Well, Regardless, Ireland, good for them. Uh, what a showing here in their first appearance at the U19s. They are going to take seventh place as they pull away from Germany late here and extend the lead to four. Yeah, and then they'll be on home soil for this tournament next time yes. it's played in 2020. So congrats to the Irish on a great win. This one just about over. And there is the final whistle. Congratulations to Team Ireland as you can see what it means to them, Andy, as they pour onto the field. And happy as can be. And they should be. An impressive tournament here for the Irish. They come seventh. Germany will finish eighth. We have six spots left to determine, and it'll all be decided tomorrow. 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., all Pacific time, right here on World Lacks TV. Cannot wait for day 10. Championship Saturday is one sleep away. That'll wrap it up here for us from Percy Perry Field tonight, day nine in the books. For our production crew here at Sports Canada TV, thank you. For Andy Watson, I'm Jake Elliott. And for the fastest game on two feet and for the creator, we'll see you tomorrow. Championship Saturday from the FIL U19 World Field Lacrosse Championships. Good night, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget our full slate of games tomorrow. Our game for fifth and sixth place, our bronze medal game, and our four o'clock gold medal championship game. If you can't be here live, be able to watch online via pay per view at worldlax.tv. is the presenting sponsor of the 2016 World Juniors of Field and Rocks. Since lighting up its first buildings in 1996 in downtown Vancouver, Nobis has expanded its fiber optic network in Metro Vancouver to also provide high-speed internet, television, and phone service to residential and business customers in Coquitlam, Burnaby, Richmond, and Surrey. Proud of its local origins and deeply rooted in its community, Nobis is a great supporter of many local groups and events to make community a better place to live. For more information, please visit www.novisnow.ca. The province of British Columbia is proud to support the 2016 Federation of International Lacrosse Under-19 Men's Lacrosse World Championship. For more information on the BC government, visit gov.bc.ca.
official U19 World Tournament across the Carolina event sponsor merchandise is available for purchase at the sponsor tent venue to the north of the grandstand area. In addition, you will find raffle table prizes, 50-50 tickets, and a select limited quantity of unique souvenirs available for sale. Once again, tonight's extreme red bargain of the night, buy two items, get the third item of a lesser value free. Buy two items, get your third item free at the Extreme Threads tent, our platinum sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder of tomorrow's game.